been hearing um, quite a bit tonight about, we've been talking about sustainability, how we will implement sustainability in our community. And we've been hearing about all kinds of technologies that can help us to do that. And I, I work in the solar energy field. So we heard about sort of large scale solar power plants. I work in the residential and small commercial solar arena. And I spend my days going out and talking to people about implementing solar and sustainability in their lives. And the, the question that has come up for me that I wanted to address tonight is really, is, are the assumptions that we use in making the decisions that we make in our lives, from the smallest to the, to the biggest decisions we make, are they really um, functional in creating a sustainable community? So I, I just want to back up a little bit and share what is some of the inspiration for me about being involved in the solar energy field. And it has to do with where we currently get our, our energy use. So there's been some discussion about this already tonight, and you all undoubtedly know a good bit of this information. But right now, the way we get our energy is Tucson Electric Power, on our behalf, essentially mines, and then Tucson Electric Power doesn't mine, but, but uh, they, 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 they get coal from a mining operation and they ship about a train load of coal, it's, a, it's over a train load of coal per day, down to either the Springerville power plant or the Tucson Electric power plant, and we burn that coal. The coal produces greenhouse gas emissions, coal's the largest contributor of greenhouse gas emissions in the world, and it uses a tremendous amount of water, and provides us with an abundant cheap source of electricity. We don't, most of us don't think about it a whole lot. The, uh, the remarkable thing is that what we've done with that electricity over the past 20 years is we've gone from using, on average, a, um, about 250 kilowatt hours a month per household to about 1,000 kilowatt hours per month per household. That's that's a fourfold increase in our energy use over the past 20 years, during a time that you might have imagined things would have gone another way. If we look at this from another angle, um, the energy that we're, that we're getting, I mentioned uh, more of the train load of coal per day, more than three million gallons of water per day. What we've created is a centralized degenerative system. So we've got a centralized power plant. It provides us all with this great resource. And uh, electricity, and in the process, it's, it's degenerating our community. It's, it's, it's mining, uh, it's, it's, there's, we've got degradation happening up in the uh, Colorado Plateau area where we get our coal from. We are polluting our air and, um, and using up our limited water resources. So uh, most of us are familiar with this, but I, um, I bring it up because I wanna ask the question, well, how did we, how did we get here? What are the assumptions that, that went into um, this type of centralized degenerative system being uh, the way that we get our electricity? And I believe that it comes down to a question that has, has um, come up many times tonight. I've heard it from, uh, from a number of different angles, and I am certain that we won't completely get rid of it in our society. And I am an example of I've worked really hard to implement sustainability in my own life. And yet I am faced uh, with, this, with this paradigm all the time. And the paradigm is, we ask the question, what's the most cost-effective way for our community to provide us with electricity? And uh, I heard it around solar energy and food production, and um, we're talking about it all the time. What's the most cost-effective way for us to do something? And the question I have is, is this, is this metric that we use to make our decisions still working for us? When I look at our electric production, which is the field that I'm most familiar with, it seems to me that it's produced a degenerative system that's not providing us with the, the kind of community that I want to be a part of. So what would we replace it with? The question that I come up with is, how can we produce and consume energy in a way which will enhance the quality of life for others, including for the environment, other species, including future generations, um, 
And that seems like an easy enough question. You could, you could simply replace produce and consume energy with any question that you're um, grappling with, that you're making a decision about. Again, whether it's uh, buying a bottle of water or, or, or building a house or starting a business. And, uh, and, I, and what I come to in feeling that we need to create, what, what, what it would be required to create a uh, sustainable community is that we have to figure out a way to shift to making our decisions based on this type of question. So I have been privileged to work with a number of people who have really used that question to make their decisions. And, and amazing things happen when they, when they do that. This is a house. It's, uh, it's a house owned by a, 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 somebody who works in the, in the uh, county prisons. We're not talking about somebody with a tremendous amount of financial resources. But they decided that the house they were going to live in wasn't go going to um, degrade their neighbor's ability to get water or have clean air. Um, they, the house is a small house. It's probably 900 square feet. All of the water for the house is supplied by rainwater. The electricity is all powered by those eight solar panels. The hot water is all provided by the, um, by the solar hot water collector there. And the question, the, the, the reason that I really like this, we, I have the privilege of working with a tremendous number of people who, who install solar panels on their homes. We have seen such an, a phenomenal increase in the number of people installing solar. This year, we've gone from last year, uh, less than 500 people installed solar on their homes in Tucson, which was a great increase over what we saw before. This year, it's going to be well over 1,000 people. Somewhere in the 1,200 uh, homes this year will install solar panels. But the reason I singled out this system is that the people installing solar panels today, that 1,200 people, if we keep doing 1,200 and and even get to 2,000 a year, 3,000 a year, I'm not sure it's going to get us to a sustainable society. And, I, and what I come to is that making decisions like this, where, where when she comes home, when this woman comes home, she has a quality of life from knowing that the decision she made was, was right rather than cost effective, leaves her with a quality of life that is, um, that's, that's invaluable. And I wonder if our fear about giving up that question of, is this cost effective, is, is really uh, the kind of fear that should be holding us back. So um, I can tell you that in my own experience in life, I, when I have had the courage to make that sort of decision, I've had amazing results. And I can also tell you that it's incredibly difficult to step out from making that type of decision. And I, I, uh, I just had a conversation last night in, in thinking about this talk with one of my real uh, mentors around um, sustainability, somebody that really I feel embodies the desire to implement sustainability and, and benefit the community in the decisions that, that, uh, that they make. And we just got talking about um, property taxes. So most of us own homes and have to pay property taxes, this person included. And I said, yeah, property taxes, I want to talk about property taxes. And immediately he said, oh my gosh, you know, the greatest thing, you should bury somebody on your property. Because when you bury somebody on your property, they drop your property taxes in half. Because they don't think anybody's going to want to buy your home. And... Uh, <laughs> This, I, I'm all for bearing people on your property under the right circumstances, and he was referring to somebody who, who, who did a green burial, which I, I think is a very interesting idea that we could talk more about. But, um, but what was interesting for me is that what happens when you, when you pay half your property taxes is that we have less money going to our schools. That's where our schools are funded from. And so I just wonder, it's so ingrained in us in trying to save money and find the most cost-effective solution and I just wonder what it would be like for each of us, for, for each of you, to think about in your next decision, whether it's a small decision or a big decision, taking the chance to make the decision not based on cost effective. I guarantee riding a bicycle to a job site with solar panels on, your, on, your, on the back of the bicycle, it's very slow and it's not cost effective from a business point of view, but it feels great. And, and I just would, 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 uh, would put it out there to try it out and see 
how it feels to make that decision and know that, yes, maybe you don't have quite as much money in your pocket, but that you, uh, but that you, feel, you feel good. So um, I'll, I'll leave it with that, and, and uh, good luck. Let me know how it goes.